So we are here again um, at the Pasadena uh, Fishing Expo, and they have it every. It's a 30 years they've been here, and they did it up. Um, I always remember it being up on Ritchie Highway, you know, at the fire hall. Yep. And then, uh, so coming down here last year, man, this is a really big event. I it really is. like it. I mean, and it's, it's a, huge. This, this is a great venue. Yeah. You're warm. It's a great venue. I'm inside. <laughs> I'm warm. I can look out the window and see the bay. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. So talking about the bay, this man here, I mean, he is the chief and editor of Fish Talk Magazine. He has Fish Talk Fish Magazine. Talk. There it is. Fish Talk. And you, you can go and get on email. You want to go and they'll send you all kind of letters. I get emails all the time. And um, he does a lot of, uh, he was at the boat show. Which boat show was it? It was Timonium, right? Uh, I was at Timonium. Last week I was at Miami. Miami? Um, yeah, if, there, if there's uh, a boat show, show, I'm pretty much there. <laughs> the Miami one. I, so I watch, sometimes I watch, it's, it's a YouTube it's a, it's a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're down in Miami and you just watch, it's just an area where they have a camera and a guy will just watch boats go through. We're talking boats that are completely ridiculous. <laughs> There are like, a lot of ridiculous like, boats like, in Florida. You got like four, four, four hundred uh, motors on the back of them. I mean, you're talking millions and millions of dollars. I mean, yachts going through. You know, I think the girls in the bikinis is why I kind of watch it most of the time. Maybe not so much in the boats, but, but some of them are really interesting boats. And, and what you do a lot is take people on tours. One of the last ones I watched was one that was maybe for the starter guy on the boat. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't really, I don't know what kind of, I forgot how much you said it was, but it was a... I think you're talking about the Bayliner M19. Like the, yeah, it had the, like the weird hull. It, it does, it has it has Bayliner's M hull. And it's a very simple boat. It's a very small boat. It's a very affordable boat. Yeah. That's the thing. The payment on it is like, if you went and bought a new Harley, yeah. you'd have a bigger payment than yeah. this boat. And it's a 19 foot boat with a motor and trailer. So it's nice to see that in the industry because there are so many big, giant, super duper expensive boats out there and there honestly just aren't a heck of a lot of these small, affordable, all-in-one packages. Yeah, the, I've been watching a lot of the boat reviews he's been doing and um, so and the ones you've done here in Timonium, because we live on the Chesapeake Bay and the Chesapeake Bay, um, I would think what, what would be, I mean the boat, the starter boat, but what was your, you got a, did you get a new boat? I did. I know you were you're really happy about the other one, but I mean, I've I seen you tour around in a brand new boat. What boat's that? It's a 26 Camus HB. And I was very happy with the old boat, but I had it for 14 years. Okay. And it was a slow boat. Oh, really? And the Camus is a fast boat. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of, what horsepower do you have on the back of it? It has a 300, uh, a Suzuki 300, uh, DF300. So it's a 300 horse. Uh, it's the model that has a single prop, not the dual prop. Okay. And uh, I've had the boat up to 52. Really? Yes. In the bay. That's nice. Very exciting. <laughs> Was it flat? I mean, how does it handle the waves? It, it handles I mean, waves great. It, it really does. That boat has a twin step that goes into a tunnel. And so it's not like running a cat, but you do get kind of that cushion underneath of the boat as okay. it runs. I've had it out, you know, I only got it uh, in mid-October last fall, so I had a limited time frame with it until it got cold out. Um, but I had it out on at least two different days when it was 20 plus knots of wind. Really? And, oh yeah. That's when you put the boats in the cast. It, uh, yeah. And it totally, it was great. So now you, somebody like, hmm, I'm trying to think of price wise, or price wise, I guess the one at the beginner, but if you were talking to somebody that's on the bay, that's ready to step up to a boat, maybe a little bit more than a beginner boat, what would your, maybe a suggestion would be? So I, I think you'd be looking in the 21 to 24 foot center console range, mm -hmm. probably. That's what I'm thinking. Yep, there are a lot, a lot of brands in that range. I, in fact, some would say the market's saturated really? in that range. Yeah, there are a ton of center consoles in that size, which is good because that's you know the primary pick for many, many, many people out here. So there really are a ton of choices. How about um? If, if you were if you were going to look for a bay boat, you, what would you? What is one of the most? What would be the, one of the first things that you would want that you have to have on the boat? You know what I mean? If there was something that you really really wanted on the boat, I'm going to give you my primary rule, which is going to sound silly, but this is a rule. You should have at least one rod holder for every foot of boat. So if you got a 26 foot boat, you better have 26 rod holders on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but going beyond that, you know, boats are 
so different to different people and different, really different families, you know. So before I could answer a question like that, I want to know, do you have kids? How often do they go out? Do you go out as a whole family? Uh, do you take out a few people at a time? Do you go out alone? Do you go out with lots of people? What kind of fishing do you like to do? What kind of fish do you like to target? Do you like to troll? Do you like to jig? Do you like, you know, there, all these different things come into play. For a live liner, you gotta have a nice live well, right? right? But the guy who just goes jigging all the time, he really doesn't care much about that live well. And there are just so many little factors like that that come into play that it's, I, I don't think there's a way to give you a blanket statement that says, always look for this. Uh, other than, you wanna make sure you get an NMMA inspected boat, right? Because mm -hmm. then you at least have that, that you know, safety level that goes beyond the Coast Guards. Right. Um, so that's always a good thing. And that's uh, inspected by ABYC, American Boat and Yacht Council. So you know you're getting quality there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, other than that, I mean, it's just, it's gonna vary. It's gonna vary a whole lot between different people and their different needs. Well, let me say one other thing. We talked about the Chesapeake Bay Boat Show, the Miami Boat Show. We have the Bay Bridge Boat Show coming up in mm -hmm. April. I think I'll be there. Uh, it, right, on Kent Island. Um, if you're looking for a boat, and you're, one of the hardest things is wrapping your head around what boat is perfect for me, right? There you go. Go to a boat show. Yeah. You get to see lots and lots of boats all stacked up right next to each other. Yeah, there's some, there's some just some pretty, I mean, you like, every time you get like, oh. Yeah. Oh, it can be painful. <laughs> it can be painful. Oh, the price. Oh, no. <laughs> but it does allow you to shop one compared to the next, compared to the next, compared to the next. And see, that's what I think. Of when I when I watch his videos, you do do it on YouTube. When he does it on YouTube, he does take you through a lot of different kind of boats, different kind of styles. It shows you the good things, bad things, whether you want a family or you're just a fisherman. And he actually points out a lot in a lot of his videos. But another thing he will teach you is how to catch some rockfish and fish on the bay. And he, we're not here talking oh, about what? boats, but he sells plenty of books. Tell us about your books. So I got a whole series of books at this point. We got the Rockfish book, and we've got the Chesapeake Bay Guide, and uh, got the Jigging book. Yeah, that's the Mid Atlantic Guide is right here, and uh, my newest one is uh, the Guide to Mistakes, which we all make, so it's good to know about them ahead of time, prior to making them. But uh, you know, it's a it's a Pretty wide range at this point, uh, but these days, people keep asking me, when am I gonna come out with a new one? And uh, all the air in the room. It goes right there. <laughs> it goes right here. It's fish stone, so it, it does yeah. that. So you have a, a live stream, you do what, the first Thursday of every month? Correct, yep, it's live with Lenny. First Thursday of every, first Thursday of every month at 6 p.m. You can watch it on YouTube, you can watch it on Facebook, you know, it, it's broadcast out in a number of ways. And uh, it's for, for and from Fish Talk, and we talk about the latest bites, the latest tactics, techniques, what up, you know, whatever else might be going on at the time. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to put the link to his, his uh, YouTube channel, Facebook, and where you can get the Fish Talk magazine. I mean, you just go right to Fish Talk magazine and go there, and you can put your email in. Else, every week they come out. When you, 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 get a, you get a uh, fishing reports every Friday by noon for the entire Chesapeake Bay and Mid Atlantic region, covering the coast, covering freshwater, covering the whole bay. That's every Friday at noon that comes out. And uh, the site is fishtalkmag.com. Thank you. <laughs>